everyone, Misco Electric here. Today is Sunday, July 28th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news. Our goal is to provide the most helpful 10 minutes of EV and electrification stories available anywhere. This week, more automakers have retreated from their EV commitments. Porsche, which had previously set a sales goal of 80% all electric by 2030, now says they will only meet those targets if customer demand and the development of electromobility picks up. They haven't established a new target. This news comes as Porsche has just secured the ABB Formula E World Championship title this week with German driver Pascal Wehrlein in a dramatic finish which came down to the last race of the season. This is Porsche's first championship title in Formula E after five years of competing in the series. According to Automotive News, in a recent quarterly investor call, Volvo CEO Jim Rowan said he's a huge believer in electrical propulsion, which he called a better technology than the internal combustion engine. But Rowan also said it will take time to bridge different parts of the world for full electrification. He mentioned hybrids form a solid bridge for our customers that are not ready to move to full electrification. Our plug-in hybrids and mild hybrids remain very strong and popular with our customers, and we will continue to invest in this lineup. New U.S. tariffs have been introduced on Chinese automobiles recently, and several Volvo EV models are produced there by their parent company, Geely. The U.S. government appears to be pushing new software restrictions to keep Chinese EVs out of the U.S. market as well. This wouldn't be too surprising if Volvo reconsidered their plans of being fully electric by 2030, which they announced back in 2021. Last year, production of the Chevy Bolt concluded at the Orion plant in Michigan. GM announced that they'd retool and add lines for their upcoming Chevy Silverado EV and GMC Sierra EV pickups there. That plant's reopening has been delayed by six months to mid-2026. Low volume production of both the Silverado EV and Sierra EV will continue at Factory Zero in Hamtramck, Michigan, alongside the GMC Hummer EV. GM's Cruise Origin robo-taxi, which had been manufactured at Factory Zero, was halted last October. Cruise's license to operate in California was revoked due to incidents involving pedestrians. This week, GM announced that Origin vehicle production has been indefinitely suspended. GM plans to use the next generation Chevy Bolt as their next autonomous vehicle, and that vehicle is scheduled to begin production late next year in Kansas. Mary Barra says this addresses the regulatory uncertainty we face with the Origin because of its unique design. In addition, per unit cost will be much lower, which will help Cruise optimize its resources. Tesla is also on hold with construction of their Gigafactory in Mexico. During the Q2 earnings call last week, Elon Musk detailed that the company is waiting to see what transpires related to the U.S. election in November. Presidential candidate Donald Trump has indicated intent to restrict import of certain vehicles produced in Mexico if elected. Musk explained that new product production can take place at existing facilities. He also announced that October 10th is the new date for the robo-taxi unveiling. While we're on the topic of Mexico, Tesla and General Motors have recently announced a plan to work together to build 1,000 charging points in Mexico. With Tesla's potential plan to build a factory in the country, along with GM's EV manufacturing facilities there, additional infrastructure investment could help secure market share for the two American automakers. The best-selling EV in Mexico is the Tesla Model Y, but Chinese electric automakers are currently gaining a foothold in Mexico with consumers. BYD, the world's second largest EV producer, has also indicated intent to begin manufacturing EVs in Mexico. So far, the Mexican government has refrained from offering Chinese automakers the same incentives to manufacture there, which are granted to American brands. We'll keep you updated as this story develops. Speaking of electric autonomous vehicles, Google's autonomous ride hailing service, Waymo, has officially started testing a few of Geely's Zeker brand electric robo taxis in the United States. The vehicle is equipped with Waymo's sixth generation hardware, which is said to have a more cost-effective sensor suite designed and manufactured by Waymo. Their LiDAR, radar, cameras, and microphones are now designed to operate in cold winter environments. As we just mentioned, Chinese connected car restrictions are moving through U.S. legislative channels. 
Waymo made a point to say their Zika robo-taxis will have no driving automation or telematics capabilities built into them, providing assurance that all connected car content belongs to Waymo, which is an American company. Wind Rose Technology, a Chinese electric truck manufacturer, is planning to build their electric semi-truck in the state of Georgia, with deliveries starting in 2025. Wind Rose CEO Han Wen said, they would build the chassis and other components in the state using parts manufactured in China. He said the U.S. market is friendly towards Chinese heavy electric trucks based on the fact that the tariffs on imported trucks are much lower than those on cars. The Class 8 electric semis will have over 700 kilowatt hours of battery capacity with a range of over 400 miles when fully loaded with over 108,000 pounds. They'll be priced around $250,000. Windrose claims to have over 6,400 vehicle orders and plans to build and deliver them all within three years. In the China market, they are contract manufactured by Windrose Partners. A first batch of electric trucks is scheduled for delivery overseas in August. Windrose plans to produce over 10,000 trucks globally by the end of 2027. Does it sound like this could be a strong competitor to Tesla's Semi, which is also scheduled to begin production next year? Cadillac has unveiled their latest concept car, which is intended to be displayed at next month's prestigious car show, the Pebble Beach Concorde de Elegance in California. The Cadillac Soleil all-electric 2 plus 2 convertible may not ever make it to production. The concept is based on the brand's low-volume, ultra-luxury electric coupe, the Celestique, which is currently in production for a starting price of $340,000. How do you think it compares to the Genesis X convertible concept? This week, the team at Fully Charged Live published an hour-long podcast, and I was delighted to be their guest. Robert Llewellyn and I talked about the global EV trade policies and much more. I've added a link in the video's description if you want to check it out. Well, that's it for this week's edition of The Current. We will continue making this series if viewership continues to grow. If you haven't yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you considered subscribing and sharing this video if you found some value in this coverage. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.